We're uh, interviewing, we have some business meetings, and then I'm interviewing a hero of mine. This is one of the first guys in the Blackjack Hall of Fame. And when I was first getting into Blackjack and learning how to count cards, this is the guy that I'd read about, and he was legendary. He's been playing Blackjack for 36 years, which is as long as I've been alive. He's one of the most respected card counters in the community, and probably the most notorious. He's taken millions, I mean this guy's just like been around. But I'm going to be asking him some questions, and I'm really excited for what we're going to learn from Tommy, who's one of the greatest blackjack players of all time, even though I know you don't like to consider yourself that, do you? No, I might be one of the most well-known, but I'm certainly would... I, I wouldn't say I'm one of the greatest uh, blackjack players of all time. There's a lot, a lot of smart guys out there, a lot smarter than me. If, it, if it's not smartness that got you well-known, what was it that got you well-known? Uh... For lack of a better word, maybe uh, stick to it in this. Uh, maybe just that I've, uh, you know, uh, been at it so long and uh, kind of uh, made a bit of, of a crusade out of it. Uh, you know, trained a lot of people. Uh, you know, nothing, uh, you know, I didn't have any uh, particularly innovative uh, techniques or innovative contributions to the uh game but I just kind of uh, learned how to do it and then I was excited about it and uh, taught a lot of my friends to do it and you know we formed the team and we've been we've been at it for quite a while. So not everyone knows um, everything about you but you were one of the first members in the Blackjack Hall of Fame. You were inducted the first year. Right. right. And and we're talking a career that spans 36 years, millions of dollars from casinos, how many team members I mean uh, over the years, if you count uh, like different blackjack projects, you know that were, uh, you, you know maybe certainly over a hundred, uh, probably possibly up to two hundred people uh, over the over the course of the, that thirty six years. So one one of the things that I find interesting about you, Tommy, is you know you say you're not the mathy type. I'm not either. <laughs> so, I you know you used an interesting word. You said I'm the crusader type. So I want to hear, that's, that's, I think, the most interesting thing to me. And the main reason why I want to have this interview is I feel like the thing that drives you on this crusade, you know, I, I want you to talk about casinos for a second. And just what, what is it that you believe about casinos and what is it that you, you think you're doing? Well, obviously, I like, the, uh, I like making a living playing blackjack. And the money uh, is obviously... Uh, a big part of the reason I play blackjack, but I just kind of really like the idea of beating the uh, casinos. I kind of think we're the good guys, and the casinos need to be beaten. And you know, they, you know, kind of the uh, the smugness. Uh, you know, it just it just feels feels really good to, you know, have the advantage of over, uh, you know, an entity that has the advantage over you know, so many other people. It just feels, uh, I've never kind of gotten over the coolness of, uh, you know, being able to beat these massive, uh, you know, smug, uh, arrogant uh, type people. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of nice people that work for casinos, but I'm talking about the, uh, you know, the higher ups. They just get comfortable with constantly uh, drilling these uh, people. And uh, it just feels, it feels good to beat them. You said, well, the first thing you said is you like to make a living off of it. But I've heard stories from you of things that you've done that don't make financial sense. Like, you, you've been in how many casino lawsuits? Right. I've had, uh, gosh, uh, maybe five or six, uh, seven uh, lawsuits against casinos. And how much money have you made off these lawsuits? Uh, not much. Uh, not uh, all of them put together. I've never never lost one I've always gotten something but uh, probably not as much as I could make in a good couple of weeks of playing uh, blackjack uh, and you know these took up a lot of time uh, yeah how much you time? Know, sometimes it sometimes a particular case might go on for you know two years or something so so can you explain that like why do you do it if you don't you're not making any money off this people might think oh you're you're suing a casino you're trying to get rich you're trying to cash in Right. Well, it's just, uh, I guess it kind of goes back to what I said earlier. You know, they just, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of the good guys. And, uh, 
you know, every everything uh, I do or my group does is, uh, you know, highly ethical. We don't do, we don't do anything uh, to get, you know, deserve getting treated like criminals. And when these casinos like uh, just because we have a small edge on a game game and are making a uh, relative pittance, uh, you know, compared to what they uh, take from other people, uh, you know, they think they, uh, you know, they. They, they trump up charges, you know, trespassing. Uh, they try and say we, you know, assaulted their security guards and re ridiculous uh, nonsense. They uh, have friends in the police and they try and tell the police, uh, you know, that we d did this or that and why they are justified in uh, having us arrested on some uh, some charge. And so uh, they, they, need to, they need to get sued. And I like to see them, uh, I like to see my lawyer... Uh, get them in a deposition and watch them squirm and uh you know maybe they're not so uh they're not so uh eager to do it to the next guy uh maybe so in hearing you talk now for a, a certain amount of time i i feel like you are helping me out and the card counters were training because what, what you just said is do it to the next guy you know and as i've heard you you're not really trying to bring the man down in a way i mean are you no no and then the, and you know, there's. It's not like uh, other other people haven't helped me. I mean, some of these uh, some of these uh, uh, card counters or advantage players of sued casinos uh, have made uh, casinos reluctant to do some of these uh, nasty tactics they did in the past to me. So it's it's not like uh, I'm not the recipient of uh, some of the kind of things that I'm talking about. And can you share just I don't know a handful of the nastiest stories? I mean, some people don't know what casinos are doing here. They think, oh, you deserve. Of course, you deserve it. You're you're counting cards. What are you talking about here, though? What have you heard of or seen yourself? Well, uh, here's uh, here here's uh, one uh, one example. We uh, over the like I said earlier, we had lots of different types of people uh, on our uh, you know be part of our teams uh, or projects in the past. And we, we once had an NFL uh, football player. He played, played with me for uh, probably off and on, on and off for five or 10 years. And uh, just to show you that what these casinos are uh, kind of like, that they're bullies and stuff is he never had a crossword said to him whenever uh, he got barred or, uh, you know, they didn't want to play anymore. They were super polite, uh, never put a hand on them, never uh, did anything. And then we had this uh, uh, a smaller guy, kind of a uh, real small guy, uh, you know, possibly uh, he was a mild, uh, you know, he might have occasionally made some uh, when he was getting barred or uh, backed off, might have made a little bit of a smart, smart remark to him. And he got all kinds of nasty treatment. He got thrown down the stairs at a Las Vegas casino. He constantly was getting in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting rough treatment in the back room. And that's uh, that's kind of typical uh, of the way they think. If they think they can uh, push you around, a lot of times they do. So you don't do hole carding. For those uh, of you that don't know, let me explain this real fast. Hole carding is a legal uh, way to beat the game of it, there's numerous games at the casino. I'm not really going to get into it, but in the advantage card play community, there's a lot of people that do this thing. You said you don't do it. Right. I've never uh, been comfortable with hole carding. I have friends that uh, have done hole carding, and like Ben says, it's uh, the courts have ruled that it's allowed. It is legal. I just never, never liked the idea of it. Uh, and I guess the, uh, the good way to explain is a lot of people have... Uh, heard of me or you know people might ask me what I do for a living and I say uh, well I actually have a uh, kind of a weird occupation I play blackjack I, tr I try and beat the casinos at the game of blackjack and they, if they you know they might ask how do you do that and then I explain well it's all math and it's numbers and you memorize stuff and et cetera, et cetera. and I feel good telling them that and everybody says oh gee that sounds good I mean you know uh but if I told him, well, the, the way I make money playing blackjack is I sneak around and I uh, try to get the exact right angle. And when the dealer's sloppy or clumsy, I try and uh, get a get a look at his uh, his down card. You know, it just doesn't feel uh, just doesn't feel quite the same. And 
you know, uh, I think people might, you know, say, well, this guy's kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, I could certainly see how the casinos, you know, and I don't have any sympathy for the casinos, but I could certainly see how they would get, uh, you know, irritated at that. Maybe it's my, uh, you know, uh, who, who knows why. Maybe it's my golf background. I mean, in golf, uh, it's not like other games. You, you call penalties on yourself and you, you, uh, you know, you don't do any, Even if you can get away with it, you don't do anything that's the slightest bit unethical. It's not like in uh, football where you pretend you caught the ball when, when it hit the ground or something like that. And, and maybe it has something to do with that. I, I just never liked the idea of it. I, I don't... Uh, you know, I don't think I'd be good at it. You know, I'd probably have a guilty uh, look on my face uh, and they catch me within 15 minutes or something. <laughs> Has it ever been tempting to to try it? No, I, I just never liked the idea of it. I never, uh, you know, I, you know, I kind of know just from here and, uh, you know, in gatherings kind of uh, some of the things they do, but I've never really pursued it. So uh, I wouldn't say it's been a strong, uh, strong temptation now. I feel like that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview is just the way you talk, I think, is really fascinating in the gambling community or even in a business community where you say, I, I don't like the feel of it, so I don't do it. it, it it's that simple to you, isn't it, for a lot of decisions with Blackjack? Or has that gotten gotten you in trouble or has that cost you money? Or Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, like I would uh, do over, you know, if I started playing Blackjack. Uh, right now but I, I would say that uh, you know I I don't really have any regrets about uh, you know I've never really had any tough decisions with uh, ethics or something like that to me it just kind of uh, it's been pretty clear uh, what's okay and what's not okay uh, you know I've been lucky to uh, play with some people with uh, you know high uh, integrity and the thing we wrestle with the most is this uh, ID stuff. You know, I certainly don't think it's any, uh, it's unethical to uh, use a fake ID. I mean, you, it's, it's, uh, there's certainly, it's totally legal to, uh, you know, use an alias, but, you know, you're not now uh, since, uh, you know, in the last uh, couple decades, uh, it's, uh, it's illegal to use uh, phony ID. So, you know, we, that, that was a big, uh, that was probably the closest, uh, the toughest thing. We we ultimately decided we're not going to uh, do this fake ID stuff. Uh, you know, you know, use fake driver's license stuff like that. It's to the uh, the the uh, upside doesn't uh, doesn't make up for the big downside, I guess. How, how often do you play blackjack nowadays? You know, I, I play. Uh, I'd say I play at least once a week. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll. Uh, you know, I'll rarely uh, go a week without playing a little bit or something like that. You said uh, two days ago that you start to feel guilty if you don't play blackjack once a week and golf. Right, two right. Days. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a little more uh, obsessed with golf than I am blackjack. If I don't uh, practice for a couple of days at golf, I feel real guilty. But it takes about a week or so without playing blackjack before I feel like uh, I should get out there. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. I love that. So when you go to casinos now, it seems like what I've observed, you don't use fake ID, you're not dressing up in costumes. I mean, you're one of the most known card counters on the planet, and you kind of have this, you just have at me, take a shot. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I you know, there, there's, uh, there's ways to... Uh, get player cards without using a, a fake ID. So I do some of that, use a, a player card with an alias on it, or uh, I uh, play uh, unrated, you know, and just, and you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, there's so many casinos, uh, even somebody that's uh, known like me, uh, you'd be surprised how uh, it, you can get the hours in if you really, uh, if you really try. The best days of blackjack. When were the best days of blackjack? You think? You think the game is deteriorating now and it's not going to be playable? You think? You think of the glory days as back in the uh, '70s? Yeah, I think you can make a strong argument uh, either way. Uh, you you could say that 
the uh, when I started. I didn't start till the late '70s, so uh, almost 1980. So uh, you could you could make a case that uh, even before I started was the best, uh, or when I you know certainly uh, you could say that the '80s were the best, or you could say uh, right now is the best. And the reason is that although the games were better in the early days, there was a lot of a lot of games with great rules, uh, great penetration. Uh, the casinos weren't as knowledgeable. They weren't. There wasn't as easy to, uh, you know, pass your uh, your picture or your information around to other casinos. Uh, but uh, what I like about right now is that there are so many casinos, and even somebody that's fairly notorious like me uh, can always find it seems to me like I can always uh, find a place to play I never say geez uh, I, I can't think of uh, anywhere that, to play because they're going to know me everywhere it's it's impossible there's you know probably 35 to 40 states with blackjack and uh, you know most of those states you can find a couple at least one or two casinos if not 20 or 30 to play in and uh, you know it's uh it's pretty, and you know, even without having a giant bankroll, the win rates are pretty good, way more than you can make at a regular job. So it seems like uh, you could certainly make a strong argument the best uh, days of blackjack are uh, right now. You talked about kind of ethics and looking back. Do you have regrets, or what would be your biggest regret that for something you've done in blackjack? What would you do differently? Like I said earlier, I, I've had a lot of, you know, over a hundred people uh, that I've uh, played with, uh, you know, and I usually usually I was the guy in charge or at least co in charge, and you know, I had a fair amount of money up, uh, you know, in, in all these different bank roles and projects, and so you know I've been pretty lucky. I've had, had mostly good people and good people play for us, but I've definitely uh, made some bad decisions on uh, taking people on, and then. Uh, Usually I was a, probably the, one of my biggest faults was uh, keeping around too long. You know, usually when uh, things weren't going well, they were causing trouble or losing a lot, you know, I would kind of just, uh, you know, I, I was too much of an ostrich. Uh, you know, I kept my head down and just kind of hoped things would turn around and usually it never did. So uh, that would be one, uh, one regret. Yeah. I like what you said about by the time that you felt something was wrong it never got better yeah usually once in a while it would turn around but you, nine times out of ten it was my initial it's like you you hear the old saying uh, your your first instinct is usually correct and that 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 proved to be the case most of the time so being a professional or gambler uh you've seen crazy amounts of money and crazy stories how is how has this industry uh, or your job or your experience changed the way that you view money compared to the average bear? Yeah, well, it's evolved uh, over time. You know, in the beginning, uh, you know, as a young kid, uh, you know, we just thought this money, <laughs> once we learned this stuff and the money just kept coming in, you know, we thought that, well, uh, this is the easiest thing in the world. Where, you know, it's going to, and, you know, I did a lot of, uh, you know, careless stuff uh you know it was real sloppy with the accounting uh i remember one time we we had a house down uh in the town just off of atlantic city brigantine i remember uh walking into the house with a briefcase uh full of money i forgot to you know put the latches secure the latches on the briefcase and it was windy and the briefcase just popped open there was you know money blowing all around the uh, neighborhood you know uh you know, I was pretty sloppy in uh, Carol's in the beginning, and then I've got got a lot better. You know, but I could certainly, uh, I could still learn uh, learn quite a bit. You know, it's uh, you know, like I say, only part of the reason I do it's for the money, and uh, you know, it's not a uh, you know, I try to enjoy uh, enjoy the money I made, and I probably should have done a better job of uh, you know b being a little tighter and stuff like that. But and you know, I'm. Just, in general, uh, you know, I've learned a lot. I think I'm pretty good about most of this stuff uh, now. Do you regret any ethical decisions? 
Uh, like what? I what? I don't know. I mean, you said the whole carding thing. That's one of the things you don't do now. Like, yeah. I mean, you yeah. you you were you were in the be- very beginning with the computers and stuff like that. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I had no problem with the uh, computers. I mean, it was w- widely uh, acknowledged by the casinos that computers were legal. Uh, it seemed fine to me. It seemed like that, uh, uh, you know, you were only using the information, uh, you know, f- freely presented to you by casinos. Uh, you know, you were they use computers all the time. They use computers, uh, you know, for various parts. It, it just seemed... Uh, it seemed fair uh, to me, you know. It's uh, the fact that they got a bunch of lobbyists together and uh, got a law passed against them doesn't change the fact that uh, you know they're uh, they're ethical, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't regret using them. I certainly wouldn't use them now that they there's a law. Uh, I don't think I, I don't really know of anybody that uses them now. Uh, you know, there probably are some jurisdictions where they're technically allowed. They're technically legal, but I think if the casino caught you with one, they probably wouldn't pay you. Uh, maybe there's still some people uh, out there using, but not to my knowledge. Yeah, and just to be clear to kind of the people watching this video, when Tommy used these, this was 100% legal, and things have changed, and now computers are very illegal in most casinos, but we're talking about a kind of a different day and age here. Right, right. There was actually, uh, weirdly enough, there was a big uh, story in Sports Illustrated about that's what... Uh, Got, got our group interested in the computer. There was a giant. Uh, I think he was even on the cover. Of, uh, the most, uh, probably the most famous black jack player of all time, Ken Houston, uh, was uh, featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a big story about he had taken these hidden computers and uh, beaten the casinos, and the FBI had examined the computer and had agreed it wasn't a cheating device, and et cetera, et cetera. And that's how. This would have been in uh, the early 80s, and, uh, you know, I think Nevada passed a law against it in 1984, about, or 85, and then uh, then Nevada, uh, then New Jersey uh, passed it in uh, 88 or 89, and then most states have copied, uh, you know, New Jersey's law, and it's, uh, they're illegal, like Ben said, they're illegal in most states. We got a few more questions left, but I really appreciate you taking the time for this. Sure. In terms of, you know, you've been around as long as anyone I know in the industry that's still active. How have you seen card counting as a profession or as an industry kind of change over time? Is that something you pay attention to or have observations on? Um, change, change in what way? Oh, I saw it. Like to, the community that's doing it. Right. Well, that's, yeah, here, if, if this is what you're talking about. It was weird back. It, I mean, it, back in the old days, uh, there was only, uh, like I said, there was only for quite a while when I played, there was only casinos in two states, Nevada and New Jersey, and you used to see uh, all the time. You'd see a card counter uh, every time you went to play. You'd see a card counter or two on on the table. You'd run into them. You'd see the same faces everywhere. And when there was a big, uh, we used to uh, plan our uh, a lot of our play around these big events, like a big boxing match or this. Super Bowl or New Year's Eve, and then it would be like a big party. You'd see the same faces all the time at all these casinos. Nowadays, I will ap- rarely see another uh, professional player when I'm out there playing. Uh, it's kind of, I, I can't even remember the last time I actually saw another uh, uh, player, that I, uh, another professional player that I knew in the casino at the same time that I was playing. It's... Uh, you know, that, that's the one uh, striking difference uh, between the old days and currently. Hmm. Now, can you speak to, th- there's kind of an ethos among advantage players of like high secrecy. And what I've sensed is kind of like boys club of like keep everyone out and keep the good information to yourself and don't share. I, I sent something a little bit different from you. I don't know what your ideas are and you seem really willing to share you know, we have these uh, new card counters come to these boot camps, and you, you tell them all the stories, and you give them the ideas, and it's, it's... how do you see this? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm keeping that two-to-one blackjack game I'm playing uh, to myself. Uh, <laughs> You're not telling us I'm not telling you about that. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, obviously, you, you can see, see if, uh, 
you know, if somebody finds a game uh, in the middle of nowhere, you can obviously see, uh, you know, they can't, you know, go post, uh, put a post on the uh, on the internet. You know, you, you have to be, you can't be uh, totally forthcoming and tell about every single technique or every single game you're playing. But you know, it's uh, when I when I can. Uh, you know, I, I like to help people out. Certainly, there's been plenty of people that help me out. You know, some some people are. Uh, it's just like any other business, I guess. Some people are really uh, ruthless. There's a uh, there's several people. Uh, you know, several car counters that have the reputation of constantly pumping people for information and never giving anything out themselves. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to. I can't think of uh, a much worse uh, you know type of person to be known as. I certainly wouldn't want to be known like that you know i'd like to give out uh more than i take for sure yeah well we've had we've had really great experiences with you sharing with some of the people that are learning from us and that have trusted us and these people come i mean i put myself in their shoes and when i was 10 years ago and i got the blackjack forum and it was tommy highland and i was like oh my gosh and i remember meeting you at a blackjack ball for the first time and i think just the inspiration you provide in the openness, I've, I've seen be really helpful. I, I think in a way, and some people have told us this even at this last boot camp, is it's changing the culture of card counting to be a more, I don't know, you know, we talk about the casinos, they're networked together and they have, they're a giant corporation, they have their team. And I think in a way, we felt the benefit of having our own. You know, just feeling like there's other people who are on the same page with us. So I, I really appreciate that. What excites you now about Blackjack? Do you still get the same feeling you walk in and, you know, it's gone to a plus true one and it's the first bet? Do you still get butterflies in your stomach? Finding the new game, what's the thing that you're like, is there any emotion in it now? Uh, yeah, there's there's still emotion. I still like uh, getting those really uh, high counts and getting those big bets out there. And uh, Splitting tens, is that still exciting? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's one thing I, that's, the, you know, I, I basically believe in almost no cover uh you know but that's the one play uh you know that i don't make very often that's the one time uh you know it just seems like the the uh the ultimate red flag to me and and i mean i i don't uh split tens uh, hardly ever unless it's a you know a casino that i think i'm not, not gonna ever go back to or you know they're about to kick me out anyway or something like that uh you know but in general that's not part of I don't, I don't do that I don't know what you advise your players uh, yeah. but, but I mean I, I don't I would say that like doubling an ace nine uh, they don't even react that much to you know uh, but the the splitting tens uh, you know uh, probably uh, a quarter or half the dealers will yeah I'm splitting tens uh, you know and and it's fine I think the floor person would think you were an idiot if you had you know twenty five dollars out there and you're splitting tens but they see uh, you know, five hundred, a thousand dollars out there, and they see the guy splitting tens. Uh, my guess is that, and the reason I'll do it, my guess is that it's not a positive EV play in the long run. You'll make a little EV on that play, but uh, you know, it's definitely going to hurt your uh, longevity. You have a pretty aggressive philosophy, though, about getting the money out. That uh, can you speak to that? Like, what what have you seen? And you talk about playing scared, and more than any person I've heard, you have kind of really tangible philosophy you know you wait for people to back you off right i i i i believe uh you know at shoe, at shoe games uh you, you know uh playing a six or an eight deck shoe i believe in always putting out the bet that your bankroll or your betting scheme uh, calls for you know no matter what your last bet was if your last bet was 25 and now you're supposed to bet 500 you know i believe in betting 500 not getting up there in two steps or whatever not betting 250 and then but whatever the bet calls for I put it out there you know every time I don't recall ever saying well the floor person's watching me and all the, the I'll digress a little bit the thing I've always hated was that when um, the, some of my uh, associates or people that play for me will come back and say yeah I uh, I, I, I didn't uh, want to bet because this guy was counting me down well and then I said well how do you know he's counting you down well he's standing right there and he's I said, well, can you read his mind? How do you know this guy knows how to count? I mean, never tell me again that this guy was counting you down. There's no such, you couldn't possibly know uh, if he was counting you down or not. If he was, if he was able to count, uh, 
you know, that well while the phone's ringing and he's looking. You know, he might be out. He'd probably be out there playing. He wouldn't be standing there watching, uh, you know, people betting five-hour chips. Uh, he he's probably wasn't counting you down. He was probably uh, trying to see what you were going to do uh, while he was staring at me. He has no, no idea. Uh, maybe the thing you did made him more like – more. Uh, think you were a card counter than not just just play and uh, don't worry about what you think that he's thinking you know that, that's uh that's kind of the way uh i've always looked at it yes okay we need more digressions like that that's 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 the good stuff i love that but that that the last year i've really i i, I thankfully nobody's told me that anymore i think they've gotten the point but i i just could not it went on you know for uh you know, some of these people used to say it all the time, and it's it's just ridi- it's ridiculous. Uh, it's it's a ri- I hear that a lot, and the craziest thing for me is I hear it from AP wisdom, and they say like, don't be too greedy, or you know, be careful, or leave when you get a little bit of heat. There's kind of like this ethic code, it seems like, or uh, what, what, etiquette code almost, but it seems like you don't mind getting backed off. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like. I prefer I prefer to get out of there before I get backed off, but I'm certainly not going to, uh, uh, if I'm in that casino to begin with, I'm certainly not going to put bets out because I think, think that, uh, you know, I have no way in reading their minds. I have no way in knowing what they're thinking. So I don't try and guess, uh, what exactly is going to make them back me off. I'll, if it's, uh, the count calls for a certain bet, I like to put that bet out there. And, uh, you know, usually, uh, a lot of times, I think I'm about to get backed off. I don't get backed off. It's, uh, you know, many times, uh, you know, I'll finish. I'll finish a session at a casino. And I say, boy, they got, they got me. The next time I go in there, uh, you know, I'm, they'll, I probably won't even get the, the first bet out there. And it's, you know, I might then I might play for another ten times in that casino. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I, I think I uh, have about the right level of aggression i don't get for as well as i'm known i actually you know i don't get i certainly don't get backed off to the point that i can't find a place to play you know i get backed off plenty i mean since i saw you the other day uh got kicked out twice uh, you know but uh you know they were small places and whatever uh you know i i thought that possibly i might get a kicked out of those places and, and I did but it, it's uh sometimes I go a month or two without and play play a fair amount without any any barrings you're making us feel lazy just sitting around yeah. this house where you're out there getting yeah. kicked out of casino still yeah <laughs> that's that's really fun um, you, you mentioned a few things the players coming back and telling you that they left because they were reading the pit boss what else makes you angry in in card county what makes you the most angry I get, like, I, what gets under your skin? Yeah, it gets under my skin make better. I mean, I, it's, I don't get angry that, that often, but uh, I just can't. Uh, like, tip, tipping uh, gets me irritated. Uh, when the, uh, y- you know, people are tipping away uh, a, a good portion of their win rate when they don't have uh, that much money themselves to begin with. I mean, I can't, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you can't, you know, because most of the people I play with, there, like I say, I got them from my golf course, and they're you, you know, they're they're pretty nice people, and they're used to tipping the bartenders and the waitresses, and the, they give the caddy if they have a caddy, they give the caddy a nice tip. So they're kind of, you know, used to being generous people. But you have to uh, you have to be tough when you're out there uh, playing. You can't tip away your win rate. And the, like we were saying earlier, the games have gotten worse. Uh, the penetration has gotten worse. You know, some of these. Uh, even though you can play a lot more hours, some of the win rates, uh, you know, aren't that great. You know, so if you're tipping, uh, if you're tipping a fair amount of red chips, uh, you know, if you're tipping a couple, three red chips uh, every hour, it's going to cut into your win rate. Why? Why would you want to give uh, ten or fifteen percent of your win rate uh, to a dealer? You know, when it's hard, when the casino is the one that should be paying them. Uh, you know, why? Why uh, the, the casinos? Uh, should be paying their employees, not you. When I heard you saying something the other day, you said the amount that most people want to tip would never make a dealer happy anyways. Right. A lot of times they think you're a worse stiff uh, if you tip them a, a generous amount. If, let's say you win uh, a couple thousand dollars. Uh, your win rate only might have been 50 or or $100. If you win a couple thousand and give the dealer 
25 or $50. Uh, most of them think you're cheap. You know, if they if you don't tip them anything, they they think, well, he just forgot. You know, he was a nice guy, but he, he forgot to tip me, you know, or or when I when they say that sarcastic thank you very much, they might have thought they they might have thought that you didn't really understand it, understand their sarcasm. So uh, a lot of times, uh, that fifty dollars, you know, that you threw in the trash, uh, you 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 made yourself look worse. Yeah. Uh, is you know that's kind of the way I look at it. Oh man, when they tap and, it, and they're not giving you a service. I mean, I, I'm fine with you know I'm a a big uh, you know a generous tipper in uh, regular life. You know, waitresses and uh, stuff. Uh, I give them well, uh, well over the uh, an average tip. Uh, but they're they're giving me a service. Uh, the dealers aren't uh, uh, giving me any service. Uh, you know uh, that I know of. They're not doing anything special for me. <laughs> that sarcastic thank you when they take that yeah, five yeah. or ten bucks and they say thank. I'm like, give it back to you. I'll, I'll appreciate it more than yeah, you. Like, that hasn't changed in thirty. They were doing that uh, thirty six years ago when I started. I didn't. I didn't get it the first, after a month or so. I had gotten it. And I'm still hearing that same uh, same thing uh, thirty six years later. I mean, I think some casinos uh, you can get in trouble for it uh, if you're a dealer, but not not many. Uh, it, it's it's blatant at, at, at a lot of places. And these uh, these tip boxes that are how about uh, not just the dealers? How about if every time you saw a tip box, you had to leave a tip in the casino. I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, at the in, in the at the casino cage, uh, you know, in, in the you know, it's it's uh, ridiculous. The sports book. I mean, can you imagine making a a, a hundred dollar sports bet where you might have had a uh, you know, if you're a real smart sports better, you might have had a two or three percent edge. Uh, you know, so your EV is two or three dollars, and then you know. Give it. They they'd like a they 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 kind of like a five dollar tip when you win it. When they hand you, they th they look at it like you won two hundred ten dollars because you're giving you the hundred and ten plus the hundred. And they they think uh, that you're just an average guy uh, giving them the five dollars. Well, you've given them like twice your EV. But they they have tip boxes there. <laughs> they have them uh, everywhere. You know, imagine uh, hitting every one of those every time you went in a casino. Okay, we got two questions left. So I, I want to give. A little bit of an idea. You've been, and you don't have to say the name of the casino, but you're totally welcome to. You've been kicked out, 86, backed off a lot of places a lot of times, and it doesn't discourage you from going back. What can, What's the most you've been kicked out of a casino? Oh, I'm the sure. The number of times. Well, I haven't, uh, I'm sure I've been kicked out of many of the major casinos, uh, you know, 15, 20, 25 times over the over the years and you know i don't uh i don't shove it in their face if they kick me out i don't go back uh you know the next day or the, you know on, on the next night on on another shift or something like that uh but i don't i don't i don't think it's uh you know this is something i feel strongly about i don't think it's right that they uh just because you play well that they don't let you play and i don't think it's legal you know i'm not a lawyer and maybe uh Maybe they can win a win a case in some states, uh, you know, against a player for uh, coming back. But I haven't heard of many times when they've uh, where a state has definitively said that uh, the casino is allowed to kick you out because you're a skilled player. And if they if you come back, they're allowed to arrest you arrest you for trespassing. Trespassing. Most times, the casinos just assume they have the right and they try try and intimidate you into thinking that they uh, have the legal right to. Uh, to do this to you and it, it's it's not right i don't think any uh i don't think the general public would accept this if it got to be widespread if casinos were constantly arrested people that played games well just for uh coming back to play them again uh, especially uh a lot of times uh the person might be behind they might have lost money to this casino and then uh they went back to try and win it back and then the casino had them arrested i don't think that they would have much support for that in uh in the courts or in the general public. So, uh, there, you know, I, I'm not going to let them uh, intimidate me into not coming back. I think most card counters are afraid, though. They're afraid to go back. I've heard you use this phrase. You said you believe that you have the moral high ground. Right. And I, I agree with you. I think most people, most people are, most card counters are nice people and they, they're, they're, they're smart people. They're, you know, they like using the math. They're, they're not, uh, 
they're not into uh, you know getting taken in the back room, getting put in handcuffs. Uh, most people aren't willing to to do that. Uh, but you're not afraid of that, are you? No, I don't like it. I obviously don't want it to happen, and I'm usually polite, and I I try my best to uh, you know diffuse the uh, situation, but. Uh, it's not if I think I have a chance to get a good game, I'm not doing anything wrong. If I think uh, there's a good chance that they're not going to recognize me and I'll get some play and I'll I'll go back. It doesn't matter uh, if they kick me out before or not. So I'll, this is the last story I want to finish on, but this is a good story. I, one of my favorite stories with you. Uh, to me, this is. I know you don't like being called this. This the, to me, this is what makes you a crusader, in a way. Was so you you faced a lawsuit with a casino recently. And they settled, right? And you can tell the story. But then you went right back. Tell, tell me the story. Right. Well, when a casino, ju- there was a casino that had just opened. And they didn't really understand card counter. They didn't understand how to deal with card counters or what they were allowed to do. And so they, they basically, uh, just because they recognized me, and I don't even think I had been kicked out before. Uh, I think it was like my second or third time in their play, and they decided they were going to take me in the back room, get my ID, my ID and detain me for quite a while. And uh, they eventually let me go. Uh, you know, they didn't have me arrested, but, uh, you know, whatever. They was, uh, they were, I kept, oh, and they kept insisting I had to cash my chips. And they basically kept telling me what I had to do while I was in their custody. I had to do this, and I had to get my picture taken, all this stuff. So I ended up suing them. I got a small uh, settlement, uh, you know, uh, whatever. So as soon as I got the settlement, uh, shortly after I made sure the check was clear, I uh, (laughs) went back to play again. And And most people would be done. They'd walk away, right? Yeah, but it had been a fair amount of time, like we were talking about earlier. I didn't just go back in to make a point. I didn't go back in and tell them, hey, Tom Highland is here. I thought... You know, a year and a half or two had gone by, and I said, well... I... Yeah, but how many casinos are in there? In kind of... <coughs> uh, like, hundreds. Okay, hundreds so you of, find yourself... Maybe in this... thousands. <laughs> you find yourself in this one casino. Yeah. Keep on going. Right, so I uh, I went back into play, and I think I might even played once uh, successfully, uh, got a couple hours in, and then I went back another time, and they recognized me. And believe it or not, they did almost the... Ex- they. Initially, they did almost the same thing. I, I think they were, uh, we were talking about this the other day, and I, I was a little fuzzy, but now I remember this was the time they were blocking me from going down the escalator. They were playing, you know, it was like, uh, it was like we were uh, dancing. I'd go this way, and the guy would quit get in front of me, and then he wouldn't, they wouldn't let me down the escalator, you know, and uh, finally they came, and they, they had the, the state in this particular casino. It's one of those ones there where the police uh, uh have an office in the casino. So the police come and they told him uh, that I had been trespassed there from before and to have me arrested. I tried to explain to them that they already paid me once. I was trying to be nice. I wasn't deliberately trying to get another lawsuit. I did not want to get arrested. Uh, you know, and they they actually, they didn't take me down to the station, but they, they had me arrested and, uh, you know, so I had to go to court and everything like that. And then the, the, uh, the casino, they didn't even show up, so they had they filed a criminal trespass. I uh, went to court. The casino didn't even show up in court. The judge found me not guilty, and so then I sued him, and so they paid me a little more uh, for a settlement the next time. You know, so uh, yeah, that's basically, uh, and, and it was good because this time I think they learned their lesson because I heard subsequently that they didn't. You know, they weren't doing it to people anymore. This time, my lawyer, uh, he did a good job with some of these security people and uh, the shift manager on, in, in depositions and st- discovery. He made them, uh, he made them squirm uh, pretty good. So that was, uh, I think they, uh, they probably learned their lesson, uh, at least for a while. I'm sure uh, it'll wear off uh, eventually and they will do something to somebody else. But I haven't heard of any incidents from this uh this casino lately well that's that's what i love about those stories is i mean i th- people really need to understand this is not a good way for someone like you to make a living you're not getting rich off these things but the fact that you do it 
for the community and for people like us to make it less likely to happen again, you are teaching the casinos a lesson in a way. Right? I mean... I, ho- I hope so. And I, yeah, and like I say, it's not, it's not just me. Uh, you know, there's some... Uh, I, I always uh, give kudos to this Bob Mercesi in, uh, in Las Vegas. He's made it... I mean, Las Vegas used to be a, a tough place for, uh, you know... If, if you went to the uh, wrong casino and they they didn't they thought you were card counting and they were in a bad mood that day, uh, there was some pretty rough treat, treatment that went on for a number of uh, years. But Bob uh, Nersessian, uh he hit him for a few. There was a few big uh, lawsuits against uh, some of these casinos, and you know at least from our group's uh, perspective, that these uh, tactics have pretty much stopped in uh, Las Vegas, and it's mostly because of him. I know Nersessian, you know, has his role, but I feel like you've, even in the story of how he got inducted in the Blackjack Hall of Fame, there's a little bit of a backstory of how you've championed him and rights for card counters and kind of this idea that there is a moral high ground for card counters and casinos don't have the right to do whatever they want. So I, I think that's really, that's huge. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel strongly about that. So, final thing, there's probably some people watching this who are advantage players who have been doing it for a long time. There's probably some people learning. Um, what would your recommendation be as people are just starting off and there there is this blackjack thing for me? I want to be like Tommy Highland. Should I fall on his steps? What would you recommend? Well, they certainly should have uh, loftier ambitions than that. They, uh, they, they uh, yeah, no, but I would say... Uh, be aggressive with going out and playing. Don't uh, don't as soon as you have a winning streak, uh, spend a bunch of your bankroll away. But try and build your bankroll up so you can bet easily bet the uh, as much as you can get away with. Uh, you know, the, you know all all the things that uh, you know you would uh, you would advise them. You know, bet bet within your bankroll. When in doubt. Uh, you know the thing not to be aggressive with is your uh, is your bankroll. Don't uh, don't overbet that bankroll uh, because you can have nasty uh, losing streaks and uh, you have uh, you know unexpected uh, expenses that can come up in real life and you don't want to be uh, taken. You know if you're going to get so upset with some losses, you know then you're probably uh, betting too much. You should be able to take the uh, the losses in stride. So uh, that's real important. And play play uh, good games. Don't play uh, don't play weak games uh, and uh, weak uh, betting spreads. It's real important to have a uh, a healthy spread and not uh, not be betting a bunch of cover and giving away a bunch of money uh, on uh, negatives. That's great. I hope people I hope people listen to that. I hope people follow that. Is there anything else? You anything you want to say? Or anything that's on your mind? No, just that I. Uh, Always enjoy uh, talking to you, and it, it's been uh, fun, and hopefully uh, people can get something out of out of this. I think they will, because I, I feel like, you know, card counting, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this interview, card counting is about math and plus and minuses. And, you know, in any other sport, you have heroes, and it's kind of the underdogs, the unlikely guys, and I know you don't want to be a hero to people, and I, you know... But I think that there's an aspect of your integrity and your drive that is really inspiring. And I don't, I don't see that talked about very much, but I think it's respected in the community. And I want more people to know about it because I think it's important. Well, there's other uh, people. You know, most people I've run across in blackjack, uh, you know, have uh, very high integrity. I mean, I don't think uh, that I'm, you know, and I'm, I don't know much about how you guys play, but I'm sure uh, your integrity is beyond the... Uh, reproach also so you know I, I don't think I'm the exception in that in that yeah. case you know just in closing uh, this is a real honor to sit here with you Tommy and to be able to talk about these things and uh, discuss this craft and we're really thankful for the opportunities we have both with Blackjack Apprenticeship and uh, with you and the Blackjack Ball that Max has done to meet some of you folks and talk about these things and you specifically so I just want to thank you for coming on and um, oh well, oh, thanks. I had a good time. Well, thanks. This was, uh, All right. So you live a mile from here, huh? You gonna go play today? Yeah, I actually have to run an errand. I have to, have to uh, get a room. I mean, a couple of these casinos give me uh, rooms for the sports, and I have to go uh, 
get a room for some guys that are coming in to play golf, and then uh, then I'll probably go play some blackjack. <laughs> run so, an errand. Yeah. To, to, a, to a card counter, run an errand. Yeah. Just always do a casino. <laughs> <laughs> oh.